Good morning and a very warm welcome to you wherever you're watching this service. This is St. James Church in Durris. Today is the fourth Sunday after Trinity. On this day, many of the churches across our diocese and our country are reopening after the COVID-19 restrictions. We wish them well and they are in our thoughts and prayers as congregations gather. And of course, it's clear that many people will be anxious and worried. And so we know that everybody has worked so hard to put in the safety procedures and all the precautions necessary. And so we pray for that same safety. In our own parish, we look forward to reopening St. Brendan's Church in Bantry at the end of this month after we have continue to put in place various other procedures and, and policies. And so again, as we are trying to do that, we ask for your prayers too. In all these things, as we walk this journey with our Saviour Christ beside us, we realise, perhaps now more than ever, how reliant we are on him for grace and strength. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all, and also with you. We prepare to receive Holy Communion as God's people by saying together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you, and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Collect of the Fourth Sunday after Trinity. O God, the protector of all that trust in you, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy, increase and multiply upon us your mercy, that you, being our ruler and guide, we may so pass through things temporal, that we finally do not lose the things that are eternal. Grant this, O Heavenly Father, for Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. Psalm 45, with the response, I will exhort you, O God my King, and bless your name for ever. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and of great kindness. The Lord is loving to everyone, and his compassion is over all his works. All your works praise you, O Lord, and your faithful servants bless you. I will exhort you, O God my King, and bless your name for ever. They make known the glory of your kingdom and speak of your power, that the peoples may know of your power and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. Your dominion endures throughout all ages. I will exhort you, O God my King, and bless your name forever. The Lord is faithful in all his words and merciful in all his deeds. The Lord upholds all those who fall. He lifts up those who are bowed down. I will exhort you, O God my King, and bless your name forever.
A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Now, if I do what I do not want, I agree that the law is good. But in fact, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells within me, that is, in my flesh. I can will what is right, but I cannot do it. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I do. Now if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. So I find it to be a law that when I want to do what is good, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God in my inmost self, but I see in my members another law at work with the law of my mind, making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Wretched man that I am, who will rescue me from this body of death? Thanks be to God. Hear the Gospel of our Saviour Christ according to St. Matthew, chapter 11, beginning at verse 16. At that time Jesus said, To what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to one another. We played the flute for you and you did not dance. We wailed and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking and they say he has a demon. The son of man came eating and drinking and they say look a glutton and a drunkard. A friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you've hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you that are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Last Monday night, many of us watched the documentary RTE Investigates, which was a very privileged behind the scenes view of St. James's Hospital during these past three months and the staff and some family members and patients all dealing with COVID-19. It was harrowing and in particular the intimacy with which the staff dealt with those who were so dreadfully ill. We live in West Cork and to a certain degree we have been sheltered and protected from the very worst of this dreadful virus. Yes, of course, the newspapers and the television and radio headlines are there and the ever-present <coughs> internet, the web. But life here has been, to a large degree, quite similar to the way it was before. Yes, of course, we had restrictions in travel, but we were not like those who were living in cities and confined spaces. And so to see those images brings home to us the reality, the reality of what this disease can do, and also the utter foolishness of those who claim that this virus is not as bad as they say, or that we do not have to do all the things that the government are telling us to do in order to battle it. 
We've seen this foolishness in our own world and it is quite frightening. Needless and reckless decisions affecting the lives of so many people and devastating families forevermore. We're reflecting on St. Matthew's Gospel in these Sundays after Trinity. And in the last three Sundays, Matthew telling us that Jesus was instructing his disciples that they're going to encounter a lot of negativity out in the world. And now today, Jesus is out in the world encountering it too. He's challenging the world too. And he's saying, look at you. You're saying that John the Baptist, who came with a very temperate lifestyle, was filled with demons. Or indeed, in his own case, he came like a rabbi and followed a rabbinical path, prayer, reading and proper behaviour. Yet they say, oh, look at him, he's a glutton and a drunkard and he's a friend of tax collectors and sinners. In every society there are those who will twist the truth and they will try and lead the innocent and those who are frail away from the path of righteousness. And yet Jesus is saying be careful and ignore the wise and the intelligent because these words have been revealed to infants. And when Jesus uses this word infants the original translation would have referred to the little ones as we heard in last week's gospel reading the little ones, the frail and those who are close to the loving heart of God. Those who are on the journey along with us, fellow travellers. We believe and proclaim that our life of faith is a journey. And so the invitation at the end of our gospel from Jesus to take his yoke upon us, to trust in him, to lean into him and allow us to, if you like, be carried by him. Let him shoulder our burdens is such a wonderful and beautiful invitation, is it not? We are those babes, those little ones. We are the ones with the burdens, and perhaps more so at this time than any other. Like as I mentioned earlier on, there are churches which are opening um, this weekend, and we're mindful of the very many people who will be anxious and worried about churches being opened, and indeed many people who will feel they just cannot go for fear of their own health. We are travelling with those very same people, with all the people in the world who have known brokenness and pain and anguish. In that same documentary on Monday night, we were rooting for people and they died of this virus and then joyfully some pulled through, still to continue in rehab for many more months. So sometimes it can be a difficult and challenging journey. So let's be cautious about being the ones who are full of wisdom and the ones who are intelligent. I'd rather be a babe. I'm sure you would too. And so here's a poem from my great friend Russ Parker, which is called Choose the Road. Lord, bless to me the path I tread, when I should stop, when I should go. Help me to know the time to be silent, the place to scream. Teach me to dream so that I can sing as a child of the wounded king. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you promised through your Son, Jesus Christ, to hear the prayers of those who ask in faith. Lord of your people, strengthen your church in all the world. Renew the life of this diocese as we prepare to worship again in our churches, mindful of those who will be unable to join us. Bless Paul, our bishop, 
and build us up in faith and love. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord of creation, look with favour on the world you have made. Guide the nations in the ways of justice and of peace, and bless our President and all in authority. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord of our relationships, comfort and sustain the communities in which we live and work. Help us to love our neighbours as ourselves. As we begin to experience the easing of restrictions, we pray that all will act responsibly so that the danger of infection will lessen. Enable us to serve our families and friends and to love one another as you love us. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord of all healing, relieve and protect those who are sick or suffering. Be with those who have any special need and deliver all who know danger, violence or oppression. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord of eternity, bind us together by your Holy Spirit in communion with all who, having confessed the faith, have died in the peace of Christ, that we may entrust ourselves and one another and our whole life to you, Lord God, and come with all your saints to the joys of your eternal kingdom. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you. As the grain once scattered in the fields, and the grapes once dispersed on the hillside, are now reunited on this table in bread and wine, so, Lord, may your whole church soon be gathered together from the corners of the earth into your kingdom. Amen. The Lord is here, his spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Father almighty and ever living God at all times and in all places, it is right to give you thanks and praise. And so with all your people, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name forever, praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. <coughs> Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you, Father, the creator and sustainer of all things. You made us in your own image, male and female, you created us. Even when we turned away from you, you never ceased to care for us. But in your love and mercy, you freed us from the slavery of sin, giving your only begotten Son to become man and suffer death on the cross to redeem us. He made there the one complete and all-sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. He instituted and in his holy gospel commanded us to continue a perpetual memory of his precious death until he comes again. On the night that he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks to you, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, 
which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, with this bread and this cup, we do as Christ your Son commanded. We remember his passion and death. We celebrate his resurrection and ascension. And we look for the coming of his kingdom. Accept through him, our great high priest, this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts, grant by the power of the life-giving Spirit that we may be made one in your holy church and partakers of the body and blood of your Son, that he may dwell in us and we in him. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour Christ has taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. We being many are one body, for we all share in the one bread. Jesus Christ is the Lamb of God who has taken away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. Draw near in faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort. Eternal God, comfort of the afflicted and healer of the broken, you have fed us at the table of life and hope. Teach us the ways of gentleness and peace, that all the world may acknowledge the kingdom of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. And as you go out into the world, we pray that you will be surrounded by the love and peace of our Saviour Christ as one of his little ones. And that we will be strengthened to do all the things that we can do to protect each other in his name. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son Jesus Christ our Lord. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.